my intention for this recording is using this diagram to push forward, this time to the process of distribution. So you can see that there is quite a mess already on a part of this figure. Because in my previous recordings, I discussed about absorption in the most general sense, under the assumption that the only thing that happens is passive diffusion. And I went forward to discussing that there are even other ways of getting inside the blood. Okay, But let's say that all of that is done. Absorption is successful. And we have now drug molecules that have made it. Like, congratulations. You're now in the bloodstream. But remember, these drug molecules are not yet going to give any benefit or effect or therapeutic uh, benefit to the patient unless they actually go to the site of uh, or, or to the target organ. Okay? So it must be distributed. If the problem is in the lungs, then they should go to the lungs from the blood to the lungs. If the problem is in the heart from the blood, they should be distributed to the heart. So it really depends. And so these arrows on the right area or the right half of the screen kind of show you the uh, general ideas of how distribution takes place. First, we must acknowledge that once again, only the unionized versions of the drug molecule will be able to traverse to the different organs because that's the only form that can go through membranes. So whatever we learned back then in absorption applies to this as well. So again, we remember that if we have drug molecules that have charges, can, it can be positive, it can be negative, all of them the same, we'll have a very difficult time going through this one. So ionized versions, we can assume just cannot be distributed. They'll stay in the blood, okay? Now, other than that, there's another thing which complicates the process of distribution. Of course, we know, we should know that the blood is a complicated mixture of different biomolecules, right? Blood contains sugars, blood sugar, right? It also contains proteins. And those pro proteins that we call as plasma proteins can sometimes interfere with the pharmacokinetics of drug molecules that are already inside, okay? Examples of those plasma proteins that are significant in pharmacokinetics include albumin and alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. Albumin is more of uh, attractive to weak acids. And the acid glycoprotein is more of attuned to the weak bases. And the way that they interfere with pharmacokinetics is that they have the tendency to bind, as in stick to or carry these molecules. And therefore, there's this possibility. We have some drugs, uh, drug molecules in the blood that are quote unquote bound or stuck with these plasma proteins. Okay. And this is kind of difficult because uh, compared to the size of most drugs that we take in, the albumins or these plasma proteins are very large. Remember that one thing that can allow molecules to go through membranes is small size? Well, that only means that it, if we have bound drugs like here, they are just too large to even pass through. So that means that bound drug molecules will stay inside the blood. They will have low distribution. And the case is that many of the drugs that we are actually familiar with Many of the drugs that are given in practice are said to have a high plasma protein binder. And that is important because if you are to compute the proper dose of the drug that actually successfully goes to the target organ, you also have to consider how much of the drug is going to stay bound in the blood because that's not going to do anything. Okay, If it's not distributed, then that means it will not do any effect. How will you have any chance of doing any physiologic response if you don't even go to the target organ, if you're stuck here? That means that the bound drug is kind of sleeping, if you want to think of it that way. And only the unbound one, the one that is not uh, sticking to albumin or other plasma proteins, or since they're not bound to anything, we can also call them as free drug molecules, can go to them. Well, they're free because they can go anywhere. You can think of that of it that way. And here, I just, you know, put placeholders here. I just said organ one, organ two, and organ three. So now let me uh, uh, say that 
let, let's imagine organ one is our target. It's where we want to go because that's the one with the problem. It's the diseased organ. And, and we assume that these drug molecules will give you some kind of therapeutic effect. Well, congratulations, because if you have free drug and it goes through here via diffusion, or if it's small enough to go through paracellular transport, um, then we, we will finally get the effect that we want. However, the price to pay to that, okay, with that is that we cannot choose where to distribute these free molecules. So it is inevitable that if they are uh, uh, diffusible enough, they can also go to other organs, okay? So let's say other organ two and other organ three. So wouldn't that mean that there will be the possibility of having other effects? Okay, of course it will depend on each uh, drug molecule. It will be a case-to-case -case basis, but it is therefore inevitable that not only will you only specifically get the effect that you want, but unfortunately, your drug may also alter the function of other organs or other tissues. That is, of course, what we can call the side effects. Okay, so the mere fact that you you that that you have drug molecules that are free to go anywhere means that yeah you can get the beneficial or therapeutic effect, but also that is an admission that having side effects or even adverse effects is inevitable. Okay. Now, just to complete this diagram, okay, I have some things going on here and here also. We also have to take note that there are some organs in the body that have barriers that are much tougher than the other organs. Those include the brain, the testis, and the placenta. And if you think of it this way, that these are kind of more sensitive compared to other organs, then we might uh, understand why or probably assume why humans had to develop such thicker or more difficult barriers. Number one, the brain is the control center of the body. If it gets altered by every single thing that gets inside us, then it will probably hijack or, or, or put at harm all of our body systems. So we have to understand that the brain must have an incredibly difficult barrier compared to many other organs. And in fact, we just conveniently call this uh, barrier as the blood, brain, brain, sorry, did I write it correctly? Blood brain barrier, or if you want a shortcut, we can just call it the BBB, okay? The testes in the placenta are uh, reproductive organs, right? And they must be also protected if we are to generate proper offspring, children which have no uh, uh, abnormalities. So we have to understand why they are also kind of safeguarded more than the other organs. And the blood-brain barrier is important since we have to uh, just imagine how many drugs are necessary to treat diseases like depression, psychosis, which reside in the brain and even other things like uh, uh, nausea and vomiting, um, pain. The brain has a lot of those control centers. And therefore, the blood-brain barrier is a major consideration in designing a lot of drugs that have to meet some areas of our CNNs. But that would be for the future. Finally, since we have three drugs that are really just free to go anywhere, it is inevitable that some of them may go to our kidney or other excretory organs and finally meet their end. So that also means that if I have bound drugs here, they are stuck in the blood, there's also lower chance for them to be eliminated, that is, metabolized or excreted. So that is why we have to assume that they're not bound forever. There will be a time that the albumin or the other plasma proteins will have to let go of those red molecules because eventually they have to exit our body. Now, there will only be rare cases that drugs permanently bind to these plasma proteins. And really, at this point, those are very special considerations that we won't talk about anymore. So remember, the plasma protein binding here is impermanent. All of the drug molecules will eventually get distributed or if not, eliminated.